Hello, and welcome back to Wild Sun Art Studio. My name is Robin Sun. Thank you very much for coming to visit again. Please do like and comment and subscribe and share this video if you like this video. So last time we were here, we were making paper chains, and I talked about big ring links and little ring links. And I thought it would be fun to test the possibilities of double layered um, double layered rings. So this is cardstock and you can see that there's one color on the inside of the link and another color on the outside of the link. And I had about a half of an eight and a half by 11 uh, piece of cardstock of about one, two, three, four or five different colors. And this is how far I've gotten. And this is how far I have yet to go. So my plan is that this is sort of a winter slash um, oh month of December with all of its various holidays uh, chain that I thought I would put up in my living room and. Uh, yeah, I'll just sort of see oh, how far this gets me. So these strips are half of an inch wide, so that's about a centimeter and a half. Um, and they are 11 inches long, so if you live in a country where there is a metric system, you would, um, you know, cut it, what is that, 297 millimeters long and about 15 millimeters um, wide. Uh, yeah, there. So that's the whole measurement deal. Um, and cardstock, definitely cardstock, not paper. If you were going to do this idea with paper, I would suggest at least three, maybe four layers of paper. If you wanted to use something fun like um, telephone book paper, you could, yeah, or newspaper, you know, with really tight um, print. Um, you'd probably want at least four layers and it might take more than that. Now one of the sort of tricky things about this is that um, as we glue, I wonder if this might, you know, if you were using some really thin kind of paper, if this not, might not be easier to do with um, glue stick or something, you know, something where you can go whoosh and have all the glue on really fast just with one or maybe a, a brush, a glue, a little, a little bucket of glue and you could just take the, put a piece of paper underneath and just put the glue on top. But the thing is we have to curl it very soon. Don't let it dry flat. We want it to dry in a circle because obviously the inside has got less of a circumference than the outside. So we don't want it, if it dries flat, you know, both sides of the paper will, yeah, I don't know how to describe that. If you, sorry, if you dry it flat and then curl it, the inside will want to buckle. So we have to curl it while the glue is still wet so that, and this is just white 
Elmer's glue, nothing fancy. Don't, as a matter of fact, don't use anything terribly fancy like um, the Beacon or the, uh, there are several com companies that make uh, three in one. What are the other names of this? I can't remember, but anyway, don't use this. Um, and maybe this mono liquid glue would work. The Tombow. That would probably stay wet long enough. And I don't know what to say about a glue stick. Anyway, I'm just using regular white glue. I know this is the bottle for art glitter glue. You don't need anything that fancy. Um, because it doesn't have to have super stick. This is just, oops, I forgot to attach this. Um, this is, um, it's just paper, you know, so any glue stick, I mean, any white glue will hold it. You don't need anything fancy. And I'm putting... I've got green colors and blue colors. Blue because the light is pretty blue this time of year in my part of the northern hemisphere. Um, um, it's also a Hanukkah color. I don't really celebrate Hanukkah, but I know a lot of people do. And um, so it's a great color for... Hanukkah. Uh, kind of forgot to attach this one the last time, so I'm going to put this link through the last link of the chain and the unattached link so that they come together. Yeah, so this is just a a regular link, ring link chain. This is not fancy. You were doing this in second grade in school. Um, sometimes they dry a little egg shaped. Oops. And sometimes they're a little rounder. Anyway, I'm finding that two layers of cardstock, you know, if I was going to hang it up like this, um, it seems to, like, not really, you know how if you make a ring and it's too big for the weight of the rings and so you end up getting kind of the, the rings pull and you end up getting a ring that's kind of oval. And I think that the two layers of cardstock is going to be strong enough for these to not do that. And I won't know. I'll hang these up, but I won't know for a week or so whether that worked. So, yeah, so I'm just going to sit here and glue links and I'm putting you know I mean it would probably stick if I did one two lengths of glue and then put it together but I'm keeping it a little wet because that will keep the paper wet long enough for me to curl it um, and have it not dry in a can you see this see how there's a little bluish color at the top and then there's green like remember I said the inner circumference is shorter so it doesn't need as much paper, even though both of these colors were cut at the 11 inch side. Um, 
it doesn't need that much to get all the way around the circumference being on the inside. Um, so I'm gluing, whenever this happens and there's a big difference, I'm gluing it underneath so we sort of can't see it. Not that once I get this hung on a couple of hooks in my living room, um, anybody's going to walk up to it and notice and say, Robinson, Robinson, they're two millimeters extra. Yeah, nobody's going to do that. But, you know, these little fussy things we artists notice. So I've got, I think I said five different colors. I'm doing the greens on the outside because green to me is, you know, that whole evergreen um, symbolism for December when we do here in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, the um, longest night of the year. And so we sort of um, feel comfortable, feel hopeful with the symbolism of evergreenness. I suppose that if a person lived somewhere in the Southern Hemisphere, I have friends who live in the in New Zealand. Um, so, so for them. Now see, this one overlapped the green and the blue because I just put it on incorrectly. So I'll just put this overlap. Can you see that? Um, underneath. So it just doesn't show. So it'll look all teal colored on that side and all green pea colored on this side. Uh, yeah, so if you were celebrating Christmas and you lived in the Southern Hemisphere, of course, red and green always works. But you could do, you know, if you wanted to, red for all the Christmas symbolism that is red, like uh, the holly berries, which I think in some of the stories is symbolic of, um, the red blood of Christ on the cross. I think, I think that's right. I'm not sure. It's been a while since I've done any of this. Um, or the blood of Mary, Mother of God. I don't know. Red is sort of a womanly color no matter how you go. Um, and green being the evergreen color that... Eh, I don't know. Here in the north. That makes sense. I guess if you were living in the south, you wouldn't need that to be quite so true. Of course, you have like palm trees and cool stuff like that. Uh, yeah, so you could use red, red and white, like candy canes. Anyway, you can use whatever color you want, and if you were making this paper chain at Easter or at some national holiday or something, then you could use whatever colors were appropriate for that. So... Yeah, so here I am. I am just playing and gluing. I hope you are well. Um, so yeah, in, in the video I did a couple of days ago, um, I did this mix of big rings and little rings. 
and I had some of these left over. And I thought it would be fun to experiment a little. Get it curled up, and we have a little overlap here. So I'll put that underneath. Yeah, so I just thought it would be fun to experiment with what a paper chain made out of a double layer of cardstock. Like I know this would work if the rings were like half the size, you know, maybe an eight and a half the width if you cut the paper the width wise. For sure that would work and be strong enough. But these hoops are so big. And I just wondered if they would sort of be able to sustain their weight. And I think they will be. Um, and I want I had a bunch of little links. I just wanted to show you that chain. As well. See, I like this. So this is half an inch wide and four and a quarter inches around. So if you take an eight and a half inch width of a piece of paper of cardstock, regular eight and a half by eleven, um, and cut the eight and a half in half, you get this four and a quarter. And so you get these nice little rings. Now you could cut them at a quarter of an inch. And I think the cardstock at this little um, circumference would still hold the half an inch, definitely. If I hung this up, it wouldn't, you know, squish the circles too much. I think a quarter of an inch would work, or you could double the quarter of an inch and maybe play with a couple of colors in there. So anyway, here is the chain that I made out of leftover half inch by four and a quarter inch. And... This is my chain with 11 inch diameter circles. I was just going to try to do the math for how many papers could you get out of a... Alright, so let's try to do the math and not go crazy and all right so if I was going to cut 11 inch strips I would have eight and a half inches of half inch things so that would be eight and eight is 16, and I'd have another half an inch at the end, so that's 17. So, one piece of paper would give me eight circles if I doubled them up like this, right? So, and I will measure this out and see how far I get. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I have a big long 18 inch ruler, and I've got 18 and seven. So that's about 25 inches. Um, so two feet in 
there. I think I did math. Okay. On, on camera. Uh, so we get about two feet of chain if you cut it the, so that we have an 11 inch diameter hoop that's doubled. So every piece of paper, eight and a half by 11 paper you use, you'll get about 25 inches or two feet um, of length. So if you used, oh, let's say three pieces, we would get six feet. Um, oh, that's pretty good. Oh. I don't know if this is going to come out even. We've got that. We've got that. this video inspires you to play with making ring chains so that they're really pretty so that they don't look like God bless the seven-year-olds of this world but you know we're not seven years old anymore and it's kind of nice to make artistic things that you know reflect our age and wisdom. So, uh, yeah. So I hope this inspires you to get creative with making really pretty rings. I mean, it's simple enough. And they can be really beautiful. I think this is a really beautiful chain. I think it's going to look cool from a distance. All these big rings running across my living room. That'll be great. And there is no reason at all why we can't bring our resident seven-year-olds along on this trip with us. Um, If you're making one inch by eight and a half inch rings, which is kind of what I think is elementary school dimensions, um, yeah, I think that's fun. But but bring your little ones with you on a on a somewhat more sophisticated. <gasps> oh. Yeah, bring your littles with you. I um, allowed my kids when they were little to be as talented as they wanted to be. And they were phenomenal drawers, drawers, um, by the time they were seven. They were amazing. They were way better than I've ever been. Um... So, by the time they were seven. Because we did it all the time. Like, every day of our lives, we made art on the dining room table. Sometimes we ate at the dining room table, and sometimes not. But art was sort of more important to us at the time. I'm not going to attach this because these last couple of links have all been out of the same color and I've got some light blue that I can use so uh, I will 
attach these two with, and then put the light blue in between. And then I will be done. Here we go. Yeah. So, uh, I was just sort of thinking if you make a paper chain and you're feeling really proud of it, put hashtag uh, paper chains I have loved. Um, and post it somewhere on Instagram or YouTube or um, Facebook or anywhere. And we can all share in your creativity, which would be fun. Um, and I will hashtag... Actually, this video now, I'll go back to the other um, paper chains I have loved and hashtag those too. Um, so that all of them will come up when you uh, type hashtag ta -da. how's that doesn't it look really luscious so uh, I'll measure this after the video and I'll put it in the description down below but in the meantime, have fun making paper chains and choosing colors and being delicious and getting ready for any December holidays you might celebrate, including birthdays. And um, I'll see you next time. I blow these noisy wishes across the world to you. Have a great December. See you next time. Bye.